Hello all you YouTube and pipe fans out there, this is Robo Optic on one of his little journeys. Okay, so what is it all about? start things and trying to change things up a little bit and try to show a little bit of what, what I do. It's not just about pipe smoking, is it? there's other little hobbies that we have that bind together to make us pipe smokers and other things that we sometimes do together. People often talk about drink. Does tea go with this or coffee go with this? So, but there's also other things that we might do like reading. So anyway, what I'm going to smoke today, I've got my Wells Super. I hope that's going to come out because sometimes the autofocus doesn't work too good there. It's a nice little small pipe. I use that mostly for tobaccos, which I haven't got a great deal of. I keep them as like special tobaccos. Um, I'm not one usually for aut aromatics, but recently I fancied a little bit being summer, so I went for American Black Cherry. Uh, by Kendall, which I picked up off the shelf. I gotta say, it's amazing. You've got the cherries, you've got the vanilla. It's quite lush. I hate to use that word, but it's, it is. It's quite luscious in what is going on here. Um, so, yeah, well, I've got my tea, which is chai. I drink a great deal of tea. I gave up coffee, perhaps two or three months ago, I don't drink any coffee anymore. Um, and the new health regime that I got because I was diagnosed with blood pressure. Uh, so the doctors have advised it's not high enough to give me any medication. They want to avoid giving me medication. So they said keep working out and, and live a kind of healthy lifestyle, shall we say. Well I'm not perfect so I'm not going to live a perfectly healthy lifestyle but I do a lot of exercise now, I don't smoke cigarettes, I don't inhale pipe tobacco, it's just for the taste, as a lot of us are. Uh, so anyway, without further ado, what I'm going to do is to pack the pipe first of all. Um, I've got my little tray, this was a camping plate that I picked up in Tesco's for a couple of pence uh, during the off seasons, which was particularly good. Here's my wells. And here's my pouch. Now, I've got to be honest, I've already got this here for a mess. I think these pouches are designed as a brilliant way of filling your pipe. Because what I tend to do, I will put this in the pouch and use my finger like this, drawing in tobacco, and very, very, very gently. Pushing it in to make sure that there's no gaps. That's the most important thing when you're in a pipe. You're trying to get it so that there's no air gaps in there, if you know what I mean. You need first of all to make sure that that tobacco, especially that first bit, that tobacco is actually touching the bottom of the pipe. And it's sort of really gentle, almost like gravity feeding, to be honest, at the beginning, but the first part of it. Kind of twisting the ball around as you can, just to make sure. Gently, gently. I don't, I don't ever push too hard. It's better that it be too soft and tamp it later to make sure that you get it right. If you tamp it too tight, there's not really a lot you can do about it. You'll have to loosen it up, or the smoke would be ruined. So if, I would say, my opinion, my opinion, I would say it'd be better for it to be loose. Um, at this stage, than too tight. You can always test the draw, but I'm not too concerned at this stage. I'm pretty happy with that. So, yeah, we all often have hobbies or things that we might do together to help us. I mean, ultimately, it's 
we, we smoke pipes for therapy and for therapeutic reasons. I mean, like we do anything, all our hobbies and interests has some kind of therapeutic aspect of our life, something that gives us, it's not just pleasure, it's something that distracts us from our usually hectic lives. I mean, I teach people from around the world to speak English, you know, they, they speak no English, very low level English skills, or no English level English skills. So some of the people I deal with refugees and I help them to speak English. Um, very basic because mine's not very good as you can tell. So anyway, I recently purchased this pipe off, uh, pipe, this off eBay and it's called a Nimrod. It's an American, like the wonderful Zippo, it's an American lighter. And this, my friends, is a very, very good lighter. Uh, it's very good for the pipe smoker. I mean, it's mostly for the outdoors. I tend to use it in the outdoors more than anything else, so that was my plan. But I start to overtake this one, which I've loved for a long time. And you'll see why. Obviously, it's a, this is a great lighter. You know, it's, it's a butane and it makes a lovely soft flame. But it's a small flame, as you would expect of butane. But with this one, it's much more suited to the pipe bowls, I think. See that? Wonderful. So that when you're lighting it, not only does it look cool, it gives more the bowl. It doesn't take so much action to get the light around the bowl, if that makes any sense. Well, anyway, this this uh, spark is bad boy. So first of all, I'm going to get the the layer. key thing is for all you beginners out there when it comes down to doing that, you want to really try not to blow out at that stage. When you're trying to get this layer, when you're trying to get that carbon layer, the carbon layer holds that tobacco in and it creates almost like an oven um, effect. So the heat is under much more control, it's not loose. Straight from that first smoke all the way right down to the bottom and I'd say that cherry gets stronger and stronger as you're going through it. In the first sort of few sifters of it you get a lot of vanilla but that black cherry is tremendous. I gotta say I'm not, I'm almost tempted to smoke it more regularly. Okay, got the opportunity to show you this then. So, if you give me a minute. Now I treat these bad boys just like a Zippo. I use Zippo flints. <laughs> you swear I've had this for years. I've had it since like Tuesday this week. Um, so, I use Zippo fluid, and I've got the zippo flint which I put in there this week. Some people store the flints in the bottom. I know, I know the smoking daggers are where Jay's J sort of stokes are inside here. So, you've got your zippo fluid, and you fill inside there. Exactly the same as a zippo for all you guys out there. It doesn't. Um, you wouldn't be able to fill as much cracks as you would in a zippo. It doesn't seem to be as much cotton as you would expect in there. The crucial bit now is to leave it for a minute. If what I noticed was if I burn that too soon, I can get the taste of petrol into the it's only for a split second, it's not something that ruins your smoke forever. But you might just get some some of those hint, hints of some people will like it, I guess. The flavour of the petrol. So we just wait a couple and I'll just take a sip of this lovely chai tea. I think tea is, is fantastic for flavour and for taste buds and sometimes enhances things that you're smoking. Uh, chai is like a spicy tea. Yum. Okay. 
let's have a look. See if that's better. Yeah, you know, I'm on camera now. Bastard. Right, let's try it again. That's better. Talking to smoke is not my forte. I'm a typical man. I can do one thing at a time. Tremendous, I gotta say. I, maybe it's because I'm not used to cherry. I'm used to normal, straightforward tobaccos, blended tobaccos. I'm not. So maybe if I try a different cherry, you'll be even more blown away. But this is a great, great flavour. Mm. Anyway, so let's have a look. So when you're enjoying. A pipe sometimes. What I've got here is a selection of poems by William Wordsworth. Let's see what we think. This one's called Poems of the Fancy, which I thought was appropriate for pipe smoking. The mountains against heaven's grave weight rise up and grow to wondrous height. The air, as in the lion's den, is close. And hot. And now and then comes a tired and sultry breeze with a haunting and panting, like a stifling of disease. By the dews are lay the heat, and the silence makes it sweet. Hush, there is someone on the stir. Tis Benjamin the wagoner, who long hath trod the toilsome way, companion of the night and day, that fair off. Sorry, that far off tinkling drowsy cheer mixed with a faint yet grating sound in a moment lost and found. The wain announces by whose side, along the banks of right on there, he paces on a trusty guide. Listen, you can scarcely hear. Hither he his course is bending, now he leaves the lower ground, and up the craggy hill ascending, many a stop and stay he makes. Many a breathing fit he takes, steep the way and wearisome, yet all the while his whip is dumb. The horses have worked with right good will, and so have gained the top of the hill. He was patient, they were strong, and now they smoothly glide along, recovering breath and pleased to win. Mm. Now, let's be honest, pipe smoking and poems to me, they're a team, they're a team, absolutely a team. I managed to get this pipe, you know, second hand, and it's a lovely little bowl, gives you a good 30, 35, 40 minutes smoke, depending on how heavy you smoke. Mm. Delicious. Yes. Now, another one of my hobbies. I know most people drink white, which is fine. And I class myself as one of those people who enjoys a nice white. But, I'm quite proud to say, I also make my own wines. And this is one of my homemade wines, made from uh, Gloucester grapes. My friend gave me about 
about 40 kilos and two years ago I made 92 bottles along with my fantastic girlfriend and we, we double teamed it and it took us a long time to make the wine. Um, we're very proud of it and let's have a look here, let me show you what it is. Fingers crossed it's going to look quite good. Look at the clarity on this. This is homemade. Okay. Right, this one is quite sweet and syrupy. Not bad at all, my friends. So yeah, I thought that um, that's what I would do today. Just a really quick one. Smoke a little pipe, you know, pipe. Talk a little bit about some of the things I enjoy doing in my little abode here in Aberdeen, in sunny Wales, which isn't actually very sunny at the moment because we have like periods of, as usual of sun and rain, and the weather is never really that stable. We don't have rains very often like they have in Florida though, like the Dagners get. We certainly don't get it as cold as matches might get it in the winter. Sometimes we do, but not for the least of the last three years. Yes, yeah, so well again, it's, it's mostly sweetness, it's, it's very luscious, it's very syrupy, it's very, very almost oh, thick and heady sweetness. I find it very, very luxurious with a little tiny kind of peppery edge to it. But that could also be because I've mixed it with my home brew. We call this one Matt Nicky. After our friends who gave us the grapes. And we got a couple of bottles to take to them. I don't know what the strength is and everything on it. I know if I drunk too, I'd probably be very, very drunk. The actual process of making wine is very, very difficult and very meticulous. Hygiene is obviously one of the highest things that you've got to be careful of. And the modern way of making wines is in essence to take away the natural yeast that's in the atmosphere. So that we get complete control of it and not only that it makes a stronger wine if you were to use natural yeasts in the environment it, it could be fine there's not necessarily a problem with that but it's not as strong as perhaps a more modern uh, a more modern sort of yeast which can produce much stronger yields of alcohol for our modern tastes really Well, that's it then. So I shall catch you again shortly.